infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. Now, a professor at the University of Texas, El Paso, is reaching out to the community there to help with research on Chagas disease and its vector, the kissing bug. Well, joining me now to talk about Chagas, kissing bugs, and the community involvement in the Chagas research being done is Rosa Maldonado, Ph.D., Dr. Maldonado is an associate professor with the Department of Biological Sciences at the University of Texas at El Paso. Dr. Maldonado, welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you very much for inviting me. You're more than welcome. Um, before we get into the work that you're doing at UTEP um, and your outreach to the community, uh, can you give the audience a brief summary on what is Chagas disease? Well, Chagas disease is a a neglected tropical disease that is caused by the protozoa parasite Trypanosoma cruzi. You can get this disease to the kissing bug by blood transfusion, organ transplantation, from mother to child, uh, by contaminated f- food and juice. And recently, it's been a report, a report that said that bed bugs also are able to transmit these parasites. Okay? So, this disease has two phases. The acute phase, that is when you get infected, you get a lot of parasites in your blood, but the symptoms are flu-like, so you don't notice at all that you are infected. And then, on the chronic phase of the disease, where only 30% of the patients uh, get infected, uh, sorry, develop the pathology. Uh, that means that they develop a heart disease or a digestive disease, and most of the patients die of heart failure. Uh, currently, we have about 86 to 8 million people chronically infected in Latin America. This is an emerging disease in the U.S., Europe, Japan, and Australia, and we have only two drugs to treat this disease. That this disease, uh, these drugs are highly affected in the acute phase of the disease that you don't notice, so almost no one gets treated. And in the chronic phase, they are partially effective. And the side effects, the side effects for adults are very harsh. And recently, a year ago, the, one of the drugs, benzimidazole, was approved for treatment of children from 2 to 12 years old. So that is a good news here that mm-hmm. now we can treat the patients here. Uh, uh, bad news is that we already, we don't have any human vaccine yet, but I'm working on that. Right. And we're, we're going to get to that uh, later in the interview. Uh, Dr. Maldonado, can you talk about the kissing bug, which is the primary vector? And is this common in your area of Texas? Well, the kissing bug, uh, is a, a vector for this parasite because the parasite is able to live and grow and develop inside of the insect without causing harm to the insect, okay? So the insect can keep the parasite inside and bite animals, humans, anything, and will keep okay. Uh, regarding the abundance here in Texas, is very common. We have a lot of kissing bugs here in Texas, and from studies from my lab and others here in the region, uh, we know that there are about 40 to 60 percent of the insects are infected with Trypanosoma cruzi. So wow. that is a very bad news for yes, us it here is. in Texas. Wow. Um, furthermore, uh, about 27 percent of the states in the United States has kissing bugs. So no one has bothered still to check if they are infected or not on the 27 states. But if you have the vector and you have people sick around, it's a chance that you could have some kissing box infected around the whole country. So that is something that is someone has to study. 
Yeah, that's very, very concerning. Um, now, you've reached out to your local community, I guess in the El Paso area, um, yeah. try, trying to get kissing bugs. Are you getting a good response? I am getting a great response. Good. Last, I always get some emails. for. I try to reach the community and inform the community as much as I can. So I always get emails or phone calls. And last week, I have a person that was 7 o'clock, sent me an email, and I I saw her so worried mm-hmm. that I just answered to her right away. She sent me a picture, and she wrote a great blog in Facebook. So that has generated a so huge response Good. because one person from the community saw that she was treated properly and she went to chair, and I get at least 10 or 12 emails a day since last Tuesday. Fantastic. And in some cases, they, I always send a picture. In some cases, there are bugs that look similar, but there are no kissing bugs. In other cases, there are really kissing bugs. Mm-hmm. So then uh, we get in touch with the person, and we try to set a time to go to the house, collect the kissing box, because I, I ask them to freeze them, to freeze the kissing box, um, we can set a new trap. So the response has been very, very nice. Good. Now, are you only trying to get kissing bugs from the El Paso area, or are you looking at other parts of the country? Well, I am trying to get it around here because for logistic mm-hmm. and transportation costs, Sure. We are trying to get only the place where we can drive because the kissing bug has to be able to determine if it's infected or not. I need, need to be freeze. This way I can keep the parasites inside of the gut without decomposed or they need to be in alcohol. Okay. And to transport that is no, you cannot use a res- regular mail. Sure. So it would be very expensive. Sure. So okay. for now, only this. Very good. Only around here. So, um, Dr. Maldonado, can you talk about some of the interesting research that you're doing in the field of Chagas disease? Well, I have many different interests. <laughs> uh, so uh, from ecology of disease and this epidemiological study that I am doing that is breaking ground because really it's not much know what is going on here in this region. It's nothing. Uh, also, I am interested in education. So I have been producing uh, drawing books and materi- educational material to give to the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, talking about proper research, basic scientific research, I work in, I have been working my whole life in drug discovery. So I have a few drugs that I need to take it to the next stage. But I already have like at least two drugs that are has been tested in mice. So I need to get funding to go to uh, the Bapun to no primate, no human primates. Mm-hmm. And I have a very nice field that is uh, the vaccine development that so far has been very, very uh, exciting and satisfactory. Uh, we have uh, a vaccine candidate that we already tested in mice and we already tested in baboons, and they offer a protection of about 92% mm-hmm. of the heart. That is the main cause of death for the disease. Mm-hmm. So this is a, pro- a prophylactic vaccine. It's a protective vaccine. So it's great. For me, it's really it's groundbreaking. Now we are working very hard, applying for grants and trying to get funded to continue to the next step. Uh, step. Um, my dream is really to see this in clinical trials and to see this how it's able to protect people to get infected. Maybe it won't be tomorrow, but I think that I will see this before I die. Okay. Well, some very, very interesting work you're doing there at UTEP, and uh, we, I'm sure the community appreciates it. And uh, I want to thank you, Dr. Rosa Maldonado, for sharing your research 
with the audience and your time and expertise, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh